So I don't know if I've ever documented how I work with Pandoc to convert Markdown to HTML. So I thought I'd document how I'm working with the text of this book to convert it to HTML to be put online, uh, both as a reference for myself for the future and to show other people what they can do with some very simple tools. So here I have text of all of the chapters of the book. And I can open these in a word processor like Pages and copy the text out. So I've created a folder of Markdown files. Now in the past, I have just created raw HTML and typed in what I need, uh, wrapped things in paragraph tags, marked up links, headings, things like that. This time, I'm just doing straight Markdown. So in the file, I have paragraphs separated by line breaks. Uh, this one doesn't have any bold or italic or anything. Let's find one that does. I'm not finished formatting these, so it's not uh, not as complete as it will be. So in these files, you'll notice at the top there's a little section formatted in a syntax called YAML, and this becomes a template variable. So I'll show how that gets output in the preview files in a second here. So I have one markdown file for each chapter. And the way that I'm converting these to HTML is by using Pandoc. So for development, I have a shell script written here. And it will find every markdown file and convert it. So with Pandoc, it will convert from markdown to HTML5. It will use this header file uh, when we're building for development and use this navigation file when we're building for development and uh, output it in the HTML folder uh, with the file name extension markdown replaced by HTML. So if we run that script, build dev, it tells us each one that it's building. And if we view that in a browser, This is the chapter zero. So let's see how that came together. In the templates folder, there's a HTML5 stencil, and then the two includes. So the nav only holds these links at the bottom, and I only need it for development. Same with the header link. This brings in a font and a style sheet so that when I'm working with this, I can preview it with a nice style, but it has nothing to do with the style that the website that these are being pasted into uh, will look like. It's just to help me when I'm formatting it. And then this is our template. So if there is a header include, it puts it there. If there's a title, it outputs it there. So that's what we were using the YAML for. If there's a subtitle, it'll output that there. It'll include the main content of the file, and then our nav is getting output there. So for production, I have a very similar build script, but I'm not pulling in the navigation or the header. I'm just converting from Markdown to HTML5, and that's it. So let's change a couple things and then look at the HTML that's being produced. In chapter zero, there's no subtitle. So if we were to do something like example, come over here and build it, and then check it in the browser, we can see that this is being output with that optional subtitle. If we build it for production, it looks a little bit different because there's no CSS, there's no navigation. This is just the HTML that would be copy and pasted into the CMS. When we build for development, I'll show an example of what that HTML looks like in our HTML folder. Here we have the lines from the header. This is the optional title. This is the body that Pandoc has converted from Markdown to HTML. 
and then this is the content of our uh, navigation file. And when we build it for production, you can see that this file does not have the CSS at the top. It still has our title. The rest of it is the body of our file, markdown converted to HTML, and there's no navigation at the bottom. So that is one way that you can start with text, uh, create markdown of that text for very simple formatting, and then using some very simple build scripts and very tiny template files, you can control how that markdown gets converted to HTML, uh, no matter where you're putting that. And uh, it was easy enough for me to have two different build scripts, one for me to preview it, uh, and then just a clean one to produce uh, HTML. You'll notice that these weren't even full HTML documents. There was no head, no doc type. This is just the part of the HTML that would need to be copied into the content management system. So hopefully that explains one way that you can use Pandoc to kind of simplify um, managing a lot of HTML text.